Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about some product formulations and I'm going to be kind of ranking them on easiest to formulate uh, all the way to the hardest to formulate and I'm going to give you little details why that is the case. So we're just going to talk about different product formulations and whether they are easy to formulate, challenging, mid-range to the most difficult and we're just going to walk and talk we're not gonna walk we're just gonna walk through that and talk about all of these products so if you want to learn a little bit more about what it is like to formulate skincare products and I'm gonna just focus on skincare today no makeup or cosmetics um, just skincare so if you're interested to learn a little bit about that then just keep watching okay so the easiest product in the world to formulate as a cosmetic chemist is gonna be oils like facial oils uh, body oils that are just pure oil mixtures um, different carrier oils like squalane or um, jojoba or any oil any vegetable oil any plant oil and sometimes these are just plain oils or sometimes they have essential oils added as well these from like a chemistry standpoint are just super simple you just blend the oils it's done there's no nothing else to it. So that's the most basic formula, the easiest one to formulate. Next would be still anhydrous products, so meaning without water. This would be things like um, body butters that don't have water or balms, um, solid balms or lip balms. Now these are one step up from oils only because Generally, they're going to contain some kind of butter or wax that has to be heated up um, and then blended with the ingredients and cooled back down. Sometimes what can happen during this process, if it doesn't cool down fast enough, um, the ingredients can kind of separate and become grainy if a butter or wax is cooling down at different times then you can have a little bit of a challenge with that formulation although there's lots of ways to work around that and um, if you know what you're doing it's not that hard but it's not as simple as just doing like a facial oil product so yes the next would just be balms butters anything that does not contain water now next would be like a serum or a moisturizer a lotion a cream i'm going to categorize these all together and i'm right now i'm just talking about the base formulation so there's two different types of emulsions that we can make you can have an oil in water where it's mostly water and then you're just emulsifying a little bit of oil into that or you can have a water and oil emulsion where there's just a little bit of water components in an oil base and then you could also have like oil free formulas in here as well and these are all going to be containing water so they need a preservative system they have to be pH balanced depending on what the active ingredients are in there and it just does take a little bit more knowledge about cosmetic chemistry to formulate these kinds of products and next would be like cleansers um, cleansers can be emulsions or they can just be water based so cleansers are generally pretty simple to formulate um, you have some kind of saponifying agent some kind of detergent or you know a glycoside that is going to cleanse and attract oil and dirt to be removed off the skin so these ones are pretty basic to make they just do have to be ph balanced as well of course preservative systems as well now if you have active ingredients in any of these water-based or oil and water emulsions or water and oil emulsions then that's when things start to get tricky because each active ingredient is going to have specific parameters around it be it ph or sometimes polarity so you have to make sure that the polarity of the formulation and the pH of the formulation is still going to render that active ingredient active. Um, examples of this is like vitamin C. Vitamin C products, we want them to have a low pH, whereas a lot of peptide containing products, we want them to have really specific pHs where the peptides are in the proper form um, and they have the proper charge to be active in that form, essentially. And then we also can run into stability issues when we're working with active ingredients. So 
over time is that ingredient going to break down is it going to oxidize is it going to change when exposed to oxygen and sun and heat so these are all things that have to be incorporated into you know the chemistry of the ingredients that are going on in a formulation so working with actives is definitely when things start to get complicated and then when you have multiple actives things get even more complicated because now you have to make sure that all of the parameters for each of those active ingredients are properly balanced and everything is happy to be swimming around in that formulation together. You can have interactions between some active ingredients that then produce a different product when they're combined. So really the most complicated it gets to is when you do have these emulsions that contain multiple actives. And these emulsions, they can be, um, they can be solid, they can be semi-liquid, they can be uh, gel creams, they can be just gels, um, but basically you are putting hydrophobic and hydrophilic, so water-loving and water-hating ingredients together. And the preservative systems do matter. Sometimes you have to put in uh, chelating elements such as EDTA to prevent uh, discoloration of the product over time. Sometimes EDTA will actually make an active ingredient not active anymore. So it just can get quite complicated, but that's where it gets really fun for me because I love, I love the challenge of putting um, things that don't belong together together and figuring out how that works. And then Probably the most challenging products would be something like a sunscreen, only because you do have to make sure that the dispersion of the sunscreen actives is properly done. You also have to make sure that, again, if there's any other actives in there, that they're not in interacting with the sunscreen ingredients, rendering them inactive. Um, and of course, this is the most complicated product also simply because it is an over-the-counter drug and it is really important to make sure that this product is very effective at its job at protecting our skin from the sun and it just requires a lot a lot a lot of testing and um, knowledge on how to formulate with these sunscreen actives be them the inorganic ones such as the mineral ones or the organic ones such as like avobenzone homocyclate those kinds of ingredients so yes, that is kind of my take on how difficult products are to formulate uh, from easiest to most challenging. Of course, there's always exceptions. Um, there can be what seems like a very simple product and you run into a lot of obstacles for whatever reason. So this is by no means like an absolute standard, but just to give you guys a rough idea on what me as a formulator, um, where those things lie on a spectrum of how I see these products as being, you know, easy or more challenging to formulate. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different, just me chatting about product development and stuff. And I am filming a video on the product development process, my R&D process when I'm working with clients, when I'm developing products um, myself and what that looks like. So definitely stay tuned for that because that will be coming uh, shortly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about anything that I talked about. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and yeah, leave me a comment on what other videos you'd like to see from more of like a cosmetic formulator and consultant and biochemist point of view, of course. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.